What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this episode because it's warm. I am so happy about that. I am unbelievably happy that it's warm because it's felt like winter had just a, an endless, just a chokehold on me and I could not escape. And it, it finally, finally it's warm. It's almost not even coat weather. So it feels great. I'm very happy. And uh, <laughs> I hope wherever you are, it's beginning to warm up as well because boy, does it feel good to get out in the garden and, uh, and just have the sun warming your skin. It feels great. Uh, but the reason why I came out here today was to show you all something that we are doing this year that we haven't done in years past that I think is going to take our, some of our perennials and our bulbs to the next level. Um, so perennials being strawberries and bulbs being garlic. So we have both garlic and strawberries in our garden right now, and they're both coming out of dormancy because of the warm weather we're having during the days. However, one of the things that I don't want is I don't want them to start growing too fast because of the fact that we still have nights in the teens, believe it or not. We have a night coming up, I think it's in three days. If I saw the weather correctly, they were supposed to have 19 degrees at night. That's definitely really, really cold for this time of year. And we're certainly not out of, out of you know, winter weather in terms of cold nights. We'll definitely have frosts and freezes up until the first week in May. So I definitely am preparing for cold weather. And so I don't want them to become too happy in their, uh, current, in their current state and begin coming out of dormancy too fast because then what will happen is the, the cold weather can come in and once they spend all that energy that's up, that's that's held in the roots to grow, if that if that foliage dies, chances are the plant will die as well because of the fact that it spent all the energy to come out of dormancy. It's died. There's no more energy to pull out of dormancy a second time, and so it's very important to uh, to uh, insulate your soil. And so we're going to be doing that uh, really simply today by using bedding litter. This is a great resource that is available to everyone. Any big box store or pet supply store has bedding litter. And the reason why I love bedding litter, and a lot of you are probably going to be asking, you know, why aren't you using leaves? Why aren't you using, uh, why aren't you using straw? Okay. The reason why we're not using leaves is because all of our leaves are in our compost pile and they're composting. Okay. So they're already used up. Leaves would be a great resource. Um, I just don't have that many to be honest. And another thing is they blow around. Okay, we have really strong winds here in the spring. And so if I had leaves, I might use them. But if I did use them, they'd probably blow all over my yard and then it would defeat the purpose of having them on my bed. So that's why I'm not using leaves. Why am I not using straw? Well, straw is the byproduct of hay. And hay has, it, it's, a, it's a grass, it has weed seeds. The last thing I wanna do is take my beautiful autopilot garden and then load it up with weeds that I then have to weed, defeating the purpose of an autopilot garden. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mulching with bedding litter. Bedding litter is usually made of either, it's, it's made of three things, but there's two that I want you to get. There's cedar and then there's pine. They also make a, uh, it's a, a paper bedding litter. The problem with the paper is I can't tell you the source of that. Okay, it's usually made from post-consumer waste paper and there's usually a lot of chemicals and bleaches that are found in that. And it, it will say that it's um, you know chemical free or, or that it's safe for pets. Usually they'll say safe for pets is what I've seen, but safe for pets could really mean anything. Um, it doesn't mean that it's safe for you to consume and it's going on your bed. With this here, with the cedar and the pine, I know for a fact that it's going to be free of any chemicals. It's actually the it's actually the byproduct of the logging industry. When they're milling the logs, they have a lot of sawdust laying around, and that's usually uh, cedar and pine is their two most common uh, is their two most common byproducts. So they sell those chips, and the and the cedar comes in a little bit larger chunks, and the and the pine comes in a much finer pine dust. And so we're gonna mix the two together to create kind of a, a, a medium coarse mix that's not going to blow. It's going to, it's going to act as a nice insulated barrier to keep the, the garlic and the strawberries warm at night. And it's also what it's going to do is it's going to break down over time. It's going to feed the soil. It's gonna, it's going to reduce the amount that I have to fertilize. And also what it's going to do is during the summertime, this is what's really incredible, is during the summertime, it will reduce the amount that I have to water because the secret to having great strawberries and great garlic coincidentally, is the more water you can give them within reason, the more water you can give them 
and the less dry they get, the more plump their berries will be and the larger the bulbs will be. And so in years that we've had great amounts of rain and our soil has stayed damp throughout the entire growing season, they just thrived. We had beautiful garlic heads and our strawberries were super large and, and juicy. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be assisting our, uh, ourselves to insulate the soil as well as kind of act as a mulch to hold in moisture near those bulbs and near the, the roots on the strawberries. So let's get these opened up. I'm gonna mix them up together and then we'll get to mulching. That smells like a rabbit farm. Holy smokes. That is, I don't know why. Man, it just reminds me of rabbits for some reason. I mean, I know obviously why, but it just seems like you'd smell pine, not rabbits. <laughs> maybe rabbits smell like pine because of that. Um, maybe it's not, pine does not smell like rabbits. Rabbits smell like pine. I think that's what I'm getting at. Um, <laughs> the things you discover. Now you might be asking yourself, Luke, won't the soil be too acidic? Won't the acidity hurt, hurt your plants from all the pine and the cedar you're putting on here? The answer is no, I'm not worried because my soil is made of pure compost, meaning that I am going to actually have a, a really good pH buffer. So if there is any acidity caused from these, the pH from the compost will bring it back up to around neutral. And if there is a little bit of acidity, great. The plants love that anyways. So, and the thing, the reason why I'm mixing the two, you might be asking, why didn't you just go with just the pine? Because the pine is cheaper. Yes, it absolutely is. The problem is the pine is a really fine texture. And I did not want a really fine texture because, I mean, I wanted a fine texture, but I didn't want only a fine texture. And that's because of aeration. I didn't want over time for the pine to compress down too much and for it to, uh, for it to begin uh, holding too much water. Because if it holds too much water, what will happen is it'll begin rotting. And I didn't want to risk the, the garlic rotting. I just wanna provide a really good insulative barrier and allow for the, uh, the plant to have access to water during the summer. Alrighty. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to put about a two and a half, three inch layer on top of these on top of these garlic plants here. If they're already sprouting, what I'll do is I'll just mulch around them. If they're not yet sprouted, it's fine. They'll poke right through. You don't need to worry. You know, if, if it were seedlings, if it were something like started from seed, um, I would, I'd have to pull the mulch back because they, the mulch will mulch whatever it is on top. But with things like garlic or perennials, they're so strong, they'll push through whatever, whatever they have on top of it. That's, they do that naturally. So you don't need to worry as much about things like garlic and stuff. If you put a thick layer on top of them, you can put it right on top and they won't care. So I'd say that is a pretty good job done. And I really love how it looks. It turned out real nice. And I think the plants are going to, oh, I, I don't think, I know the plants are going to do absolutely incredible underneath this pine mulch here. And the strawberry bed in the back, that's done as well. I just took the plants and just kind of pulled them up and tucked the mulch around it. Not as thick as the, as the garlic because the garlic grows up almost in kind of spear shaped leaves that grow straight up for a little bit. So they'll be able to poke through any mulch, but I didn't want to bury the strawberries too deep because they're kind of a more of a ground cover type plant. And so I just gently mulch them because and they're also hardier as well. They'll survive uh, down to 15 degrees, no problem. But I didn't want to stress them out because I really do want a bumper crop of strawberries this year. And I think they're going to do just uh, incredible with that mulch there. And it's one of those things that if you take the extra effort to do these things early season, they pay off huge dividends later on. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I do hope you try this method it certainly is something that you can do on all your plants. You don't even have to do this with just your bulbs and your perennials, even though they'll benefit probably the most. Anything that can be mulched can be mulched using this method. Uh, and it really went a long way. So one bag of the cedar mulch and one bag of the pine mulch mixed in a one to one ratio pretty much did, well, it did 48 square feet and then about maybe 24 square feet or so. So that's a lot of coverage for just two of those bags. And uh, it's not too bad. I think the all in cost on both of those bags were 
I want to say like $11 for both of them. So really not bad. And most of that was in the cedar chips. So as always, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try it. Let me know if you do try it in the comments box below. And if you do try it and you decide to take pictures, share them with, over, uh, share them with us over on Facebook. Ah, tongue tied. All right, I'll catch you later on the next episode. This is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. <laughs> and we'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.